Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. At the same time, it is a work in progress. There are concessions that are being announced. There are new announcements that are coming every day. Uh, as someone who has been on the inside track of having uh, been working on the blueprint, the draft of this for many months, because we now know on record from the military that this has been a, uh, you know in the works for the last more than a year. Uh, can you tell us how you look at the kind of pushback that Agnipath has received and why you think, given the nationwide protest, that this is a risk worth taking? You know, Barkha, uh, I must first correct you. I was not working on the blueprint of the scheme, but I was associated with certain parts of the scheme and uh, those issues I placed before you. But yes, as an army commander, I was aware of, um, I mean, uh, uh, the fact that such a scheme was in the offing. It, it was discussed at, at various forums. And I'll uh, try and tell you, just give me two minutes to tell you why I am an advocate of the scheme. You see, uh, and just a quick, few quick bullet points. In my view, the national, the, there is humongous change through the national security landscape across countries across the globe, national security landscape. We somehow in India seem to think that the change is happening only in the civil space, in the civilian digital spaces, uh, aviation, communications, energy. There is equal space a change sweeping the national security landscape. In response, you know, countries have been reforming, carrying out HR reform. They've been carrying, uh, creating new talent pipelines. I'll give you some examples of, of the extent to which countries are going in terms of technological innovation, so on and so forth. And what is really worrying is what our northern neighbor is doing, China. There is humongous change. So do we wish to respond to this change dynamic? That is the first question. In my view, we should. The very purpose of CDS DMA, it was not really about giving secretarial powers and all. It was to tell the armed forces that here, you have a voice, you have a say. Now, design, articulate, and drive change through the national security system. So it is a huge challenge. Agni Path is one of those steps, one of those steps. And uh, it has three metrics. Now, the first thing I must tell you, this started off with uh, some misconceptions. The first misconception was that the armed forces were not consulted and it was, you know, dumped or pushed down our throats, which is not true at all. Uh, there was active consultation. I won't say there, was, there, there is agreement. Uh, there was total unanimity in, in, in the final metrics of the scheme because I left sometime in March, but there was very ac active cons uh, consultation, things going up and down. So it is Agni Path actually encompasses reforms in three modules and very quickly. One is in the recruitment module. Now, our recruitment module, as Dhanava and all will know, we've been all in this together, is a rather archaic. You know, it's, it is based on physical fitness, medical fitness and a small written test. Outside, there are huge changes uh, underway. There is online, you know, sifting, uh, online screening. There is a matching of attributes of the aspirant with the needs of the army. So I would just like to posit that it is a sophisticated, complex process. So there is recruitment reform, which is happening in service training. Now, this is something that our track dealt with. And, you know, like most of us, we've been in, we've been in operational assignments, so on and so forth. We really don't, don't take a deep look at training. I was aghast to learn that while most militaries in the world, the training period was about 19, 20 weeks. We were training for in some of the technical arms for one and a half years. I mean, you take a you take a driver with a license and train him in training again. There are many resident capacities today in ITIs which have been further uplinked with Skill India and all. These technical capacities are available outside. So, what is the optimization? If I can reduce four weeks in the duration of training and the money so saved, if I invest in sniping simulators, AI platforms, blockchain. All this stuff, this is actually, so it is optimization of training. Now, the one worry was in the intake pattern, if you have improved, you will get the best. So it is from merely employment generation. It is a humble attempt to transit to ta talent maximization. So if you get good people, you train them well, and you re-enroll only 25% of the 100, 
you are getting best the best of the best now that is a narrow army view so the worry was about the agnivis what do they do are this uh, future secure a lot of that also was in plan you see all these things which have been rolled out open schools recognition by ignu uh, bridging courses this could not have done been done in 24 48 hours over the last 2 to 3 years the artrack has signed mous with uh, mit rru mit iits iims all this did not happen in a jiffy so a load lot of this was in the offing and they have now been put together as part of this scheme the last point i'd like to make is see i don't know whether this has been triggered by the protests and the push back from the veteran community but even that is for the good for 70 years what we could not do as an army commander i would plead with chief ministers ki saab 10 saal reservation hai put some people in those vacancies were never filled today you are getting vacancies 10% in police forces coast guard seven chief ministers have tweeted uh, ashok leland uh, lnt some priya industries i am saying this is a golden opportunity to push this through uh, people say in the past we didn't succeed so today we will won't succeed i'll tell you why we will succeed pehle it was the armed forces pleading to the political class he then these chaps go out what will they do and there was always some consultation between the politicians and the bureaucrats and we were finally told kuch nahi ho sakta hai. now there is dual stakeholding the armed forces are saying so the political leadership has a stake on it there are far greater chances of these things happening so this is really game changing and one last point i'd like to make barka see the scale of change i remember it was around the second or third pay commission general sinha one of our very respected generals i mean i've i've, I've heard this from him when he was in dialogue with the pay commission the pay commission when in terms of equation said that a skilled soldier is equal to or lesser than a unskilled laborer now today you see what is going to happen with this national schooling uh, igno accreditation education ministry stepping in the agni veer if we push this project with sincerity with wisdom with resolve this agni veer product is going to become a superior product as is the case in many countries abroad he will not have to beg for jobs he will be sought after so this is okay. my large argument i have just one well, five seconds of course there are disagreements many of these the people on the panel i respect them greatly but dhanwa so all the points that he's making they are being systematically addressed so whenever you have change there will be pushbacks there will be miscommunications but it is my earnest plea that we should not lose this golden opportunity to change well thank you for uh, those opening uh, remarks and helping us frame our conversation general shukla i have one question to you before i open it up for the for the rest of our panel um you know why not a pilot why not a testing uh, phase why not a test bed uh, this is something that many have asked uh, you know and i think that maybe you're right and you know i take the point about dynamism about the adversary changing tactics about i mean go no further even if you watch uh, the latest top gun uh, you know tom cruise is told uh, by his boss that there will come a time when we won't need you guys they'll only be the machines uh, but you know our military our military is 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 driven by the josh of its men and now progressively its women and not simply the machines and therefore i ask with all respect for an institution i love and i have spent my entire professional life reporting on why not a test project so see a very valid question so um, one is you know watching top gun is a good idea but if you do a research on the capacity of the indian system to push back and not let anything happen you will not be an advocate of uh, test bed i'll give you an example of test bed so theater commands we test bedded the ad command what happened the point is it's not a matter of agni pat agni veer there is so much of change that we have to execute down the down this path we ju- just have to find a way of doing it otherwise everything will be pushed back look at theater commands a good example you even you voice the idea of test bedding there was acceptance and there was push back so this is what is going to happen so it is really not about agni veer agni pat the last point i wish to make is this you see if the scheme has the weight of the service chiefs behind it three powerful service chiefs the weight of the raksha mantri the pradhan mantri 
the Indian system. Are we saying that we do not have the capacity to push any change through? It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.